Welcome back. In this previous section, we downloaded the Boston housing dataset, performed some exploratory data analysis, and just to actually get ourselves familiar with the features that has been provided. Uh, just as a reminder, the features that's been provided, uh, we'll start from the bottom here, the last column being the medium house price, you have the lower status of the population, the population of blacks, the pupil teacher ratio, the property uh, tax rate per 10,000, the, also the accessibility, how close it is from the highway, the difference from the employment center, the age of the buildings, the number of rooms per dwelling, the nitric oxide concentration, uh, Charles River dummy variable, whether it's actually tracked along it or not, uh, the proportion of non-retail business, uh, acres per town, the proportion of residential land zone for lots over 25,000 and finally the per capita crime rate by town. So it's necessary for us to actually be familiar with them. So the next thing that we are going to do is just get a, another sense, uh, another scan through a bit like x-ray to understand the correlation between the actual uh, individual features, meaning each column, how do they relate to each other, and more importantly, how does it actually relate to the so-called median uh, price that we are trying to predict here. Uh, the beauty of it is that we, in Pandas, it has a function uh, or method called core, uh, basically that is uh, correlation analysis. Uh, all you have to do is take the Pandas data frame dot core and runs it and you will get a, a correlation matrix like this. Uh, this is probably one of the key feature that you can use to get a really quick appreciation and understanding of how the underlying data uh, or the features interact with each other. All right, I made some modification because it was rather difficult to read before uh, with uh, four decimals and uh, it just looks too cluttered. So I've just set the, uh, using the pandas option, set the float format to just uh, three decimals. Uh, it makes it a bit easier to read now. Now, because we are trying to uh, model a basic simple linear regression with only one variable on the uh, medium uh, value, uh, we would like to look at something that actually is high. So if you scan through this, um, this whole column here and basically this is relating to each and every one of these obviously to itself is really high uh, it also has a high correlation with lstat um, the other one is rm and um, this is one way that you can select your features using rm and using lstat which is actually directly opposite so our lstat is basically the percentage of lower status of the population so the greater the proportion, uh, the more um, it has a direct correlation, they are inversely correlated. The other way to do this is to just plot a figure, a heat map using the C bond. Um, so if we plot this out, this is what it looks like. Uh, what I've done is that I've set the figure a little bit larger so that we can actually visualize this uh, easily. And the other one is just uh, annotated so that you can actually see the value here. So here you can see the RM is fairly high. Um, of course, to itself is 100% and it's really blue here for the uh, lower stats. Um, so looking through this, if you're going to do multiple linear regression, you probably will choose this. Uh, anything that is uh, larger than 0.5 is probably worthwhile looking at it. Uh, at least that's the first cut uh, as you add. And there are quite a few that is negative correlated. So you have the text distance from the road. Uh, this is the... Uh, PT ratio, which is the parent-teacher ratio, and also the lower stats. And uh, finally, this is the industry the percentage that is allocated to non-retail. And also, uh, not surprisingly, it's uh, inversely correlated to crime as well. So there's quite a few things that explain why house prices go down. Uh, there's only really one that explains why house prices goes up, which is the number of room. Okay, so... That's really the end of what I want to show you here uh, in terms of the cor correlation analysis and feature selection. Um, I'd like to give you an opportunity to try this out. 
um, because uh, it's it's necessary for you to play around with this just to actually get yourself familiar with it the first thing is that you might want to try the float uh, to see what it looks like in terms of the presentation this is really crucial especially when you're presenting to management uh, if it's like this is uh, they're gonna find it really difficult to uh, understand and most people have a phobia with numbers so if you present it with this uh, this way again on a table of 14 by 14 it's just too much for people to uh, to take in in one go However, if you actually change the so-called to a heat map and present it this way, um, it's much more palatable to people. Um, there are a couple of features that comes with the Seaborn heat map. Uh, I just want to show you heat map. And the one, this is one of the beauty of the Jupyter Notebook is if you just press question, uh, it brings up all of the doc string, okay, or the documentation. You can actually uh, there are a few things that you can actually uh, modify here. You can actually change the color setting um, to make it, um, well, you know, choose the, the so-called the color type that you like. Um, obviously, I've chosen uh, to annotate. Uh, there are a few other things to actually, you know, beautify the whole, uh, the whole charts that is uh, suitable for your use. So I highly encourage you to actually play around with it. Um, so I'm going to pause the video, let you try typing the actual code in first of all and play around with it and better still see if you can actually select let's just say these four column cream zn indus and cars rather than plotting such a big uh, heat map just plot these first four against medv medv okay and see you know what does the actual heat map looks like so that will be your challenge i'm you know, I encourage you to pause the video i'll come back and wrap this up. Welcome back. Um, did you manage that? Uh, how did that work out? Um, I really hope that it went well and you know, obviously um, you probably will encounter some uh, problems. Um, what I want to illustrate here is that the when it comes to the pender selection uh, in terms of the columns, you do need to put a double quote. So I've selected CRIM, ZN, Indus, CHAS, as well as MEDV. So let's just plot this heat map out and this is what it looks like. So if we narrow down to just these uh, four variables along with the medium value, uh, this is what you what it looks like. So you have CRIM, you have, and uh, again, this is actually negatively inversely correlated the number of uh, non-retail also inversely correlated which is not surprising because you know most people uh, prefer to not live nearby a factory okay especially a non uh, uh, non-retail factory you know it could be um, steel plant you know that gives out fuel and and a noise right throughout the night or manufacturing plant that runs throughout the you know the day in 24 hours so people usually don't like that so that's understandable so that's really the end of uh, this video i hope you have found that really useful in the next video uh, we will move into the actual linear regression itself using the variable that we've selected and we're going to use psychic learn to perform our modeling and also uh, just to see what the actual looks like okay what the chart looks like and also do some visualization as well so i look forward to seeing you in the next video